Big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. And even to, to do it in a small scale is just as big a mistake almost as not doing it at all. What if I told you that with just $500, you could potentially expand your wallet to 5000 in just a couple of months? Sound like a stretch? Well, not in the world of investing. And certainly not if we take a page from the playbook of the legendary investor Warren Buffett. Today, we're going to explore how the Oracle of Omaha's principles could help us achieve this financial transformation by 2024. So get ready and let's decode Buffett's wisdom together. Now let's be clear. Multiplying money tenfold in a year is no small feat. And it requires a blend of discipline, knowledge, and a bit of luck. But let's approach this the Buffett way with a down-to-earth, methodical strategy. Okay, everyone, let us get together and talk about what we're up against. We've got $500 in our pocket, and we're aiming for the $5,000 mark. That's not just doubling down. We're talking about a 900% climb. Imagine you're at the base of a financial Mount Everest, and you're looking up, way up. Now the stock market's like a trusty old tractor. It chugs along, giving us a nice 7 to 10% return each year. Reliable, but it's not going to win any races. What we're aiming for is more like strapping a rocket to our backs and shooting for the stars. Let's sprinkle in some reality here. Historically, the S&P 500, a proxy for the market, has had an average annual return of around 10%. For us to reach our goal, the market would have to do in one year what it has done for the past 90 years. That's like expecting a year's worth of rain in a single day. Think of it this way. If investing were a basketball game, we're not just trying to sink a three-pointer. We're going for a full-court shot, with seconds on the clock. It's a buzzer-beater move that could make us the MVP or leave us with a ball that's gone way off court. So, are we ready to lace up our sneakers and hit the court? Remember, with high stakes comes the thrill of the game, but also the chance of a turnover. Let's play smart, team. Let's get into the game plan. Let's become more like Warren Buffett now. Investing is not that, is really not complicated. I mean, the, the, the basic framework for it is simple. Now, then you, you have to work at it some to find the best pockets of, of uh, undervaluation, maybe, or something. The man's a legend, not for making quick bucks, but for smart, long-term plays. However... Since we're in a bit of a time crunch, we're going to take a page out of his book and tweak it. Buffett loves a good bargain, investing in undervalued companies and waiting for the market to catch up. But what if we're scouting for those rare gems that are not just undervalued, but also on the brink of a breakthrough? We're talking about startups on the verge of securing a patent, or a small biotech firm nearing a major FDA approval. And patience? Well, Buffett waits years, but we've got months. So we're looking for sprinters in the marathon world. These are the investments that can either sprint ahead or run out of steam fast. Here's a stat to chew on. Small cap stocks have outperformed large cap stocks by an average of 2% annually over the last 90 years. But, and that's a big but, they also come with more volatility. That's the trade-off we're dealing with. So, as we adapt Buffett's wisdom to our timeline, we're keeping an eye out for those high-growth potentials, ready to pounce on opportunities, and equally ready to pivot if things start to look dicey. It's all about being agile, informed, and yes, a bit daring. Ready to take the leap? All right, team, we're venturing into the high-octane world of high-risk, high-reward strategies. This is where the financial thrill-seekers play, and we're joining the game. First up, let's talk about the wild west of investing, cryptocurrencies. These digital assets are like the roller coasters of the investment park. Sky-high climbs, stomach-churning drops, and the chance to come out with a story to tell. Bitcoin, for instance, had a meteoric rise of over 300% in 2020. But remember, it's had its share of steep drops, too. If you catch the right wave, it's a surfer's dream. But timing is everything and wipeouts are a part of the sport. Moving on, we've got penny stocks, the underdogs of the stock market. 
These low-priced, high-volatility stocks are like betting on a dark horse in the Kentucky Derby. The odds are long, but if it pays off, it pays off big. Here's a stat for you. Over 1,000% returns are not unheard of in penny stocks. But for every success story, there are countless others that didn't make it past the starting gate. Then, there are the high-stakes world of options trading. Options are like the VIP tickets to the investment show, offering leverage that can turn a small investment into a fortune or into dust. The catch? It's all about precision. You need to call the market's moves, and you need to call them right. It's like trying to hit a bullseye in a windstorm. Now, let's not forget about initial public offerings, or IPOs. Investing in a company as it goes public can be like catching lightning in a bottle. Take Airbnb's IPO on December 2020. Shares more than doubled on the first day of trading. But for every Airbnb, there's a WeWork, reminding us that not all that glitters is gold. And how about those high-growth sectors? Renewable energy, biotechnology, artificial intelligence. These are the frontiers of innovation, where a smart pick can turn into tomorrow's tech titan. But remember, for every Amazon, there's been a Pets.com. It's a future-forward gamble. As we navigate these choppy waters, let's sprinkle in some of Buffett's caution. Diversification is our life jacket. We don't put all of our eggs into one basket, we spread them out. Maybe we allocate a portion to crypto, some to a mix of penny stocks, a dash to options, and a slice of an IPO or two. Man, let's talk about timing. In high-risk investing, timing is not just a factor, it's the factor. The right move at the wrong time is still the wrong move. We need to be on our toes, ready to jump in when the moment's hot and jump out when it cools off. But with all this talk of risk, let's not forget the other side of the coin, risk management. We're not here to gamble away the farm. We're here to make calculated moves. We set stop losses, we do our homework, and we never invest more than we can afford to lose. So, as we gear up for this financial rodeo, remember, it's not just about the thrill of the ride. It's about staying in the saddle. We're here to play the game with eyes wide open, to take the shots that make sense, and to always, always have a plan. Let's get strategic, let's get savvy, and let's get that $500 working overtime. Onward to 5000 now let us slow down a bit and talk about strategy. More specifically, allocation and diversification. It's like putting together a championship team. You need a balanced lineup to win the game. Imagine that $500 is your team's budget. You wouldn't spend it all on a star quarterback if it meant playing without a defense. Similarly, in investing, you don't pour all of your capital into one asset, no matter how promising it looks. You spread it out. You diversify. It's your best defense against the unexpected. Think of diversification as your financial portfolio's immune system, keeping it healthy when market viruses strike. A well-diversified portfolio might include a mix of stocks, bonds, ETFs, and yes, even a small percentage of high-risk options like crypto or penny stocks. It's about creating a balance that can withstand shocks and still capitalize on opportunities. But how do we slice this $500 pie? Well, there's no one-size-fits-all recipe, but here's a thought. Let's say we put 50% into more stable, established ETFs. These are our linebackers, reliable and steady. Another 30% could go into a mix of individual stocks from different sectors. Those are our running backs and receivers, each with their own strengths. The remaining 20%, that's our wild card split between high-risk assets like crypto, options, or that hot new IPO. Our special teams, capable of big plays. And within that high-risk slice, we're not just throwing darts blindfolded. We're picking our shots with precision. Maybe 5% in a promising crypto, 5% in a couple of penny stocks with solid fundamentals, and the last 10% in options or an IPO that's been thoroughly vetted. Allocation is about more than just spreading risk. It's about positioning ourselves to capture gains across different scenarios. The market's a complex beast, and no one can predict its moves with certainty. But with a diversified portfolio, we're not just surviving. We're setting up to thrive, no matter which way the market jumps. So, as we build our team, let's remember, 
diversity is strength, allocation is strategy, and together, they're our playbook for turning $500 into $5,000. All right, team, it's time to hit the books. Warren Buffett spends 80% of his day reading. Why? Because in the game of investing, knowledge is the ultimate power play. Let's say you're considering a hot stock tip that you've heard on the grapevine. Or there's a buzz about a breakthrough in biotech. Before you jump in, you dive deep. You are looking at the company's finances, market trends, and even the history of the leadership team. It's like scouting the opposing team before the big game. And it's not just about reading up. It's about understanding. If you're eyeing that cryptocurrency, do you get blockchain? If you're looking at stocks, can you read between the lines of an earnings report? This is the homework that makes the difference between a calculated decision and a shot in the dark. Here's a stat to keep in your back pocket. A study showed that individual investors who did their homework outperformed those who didn't by about 1.2% annually. It might not sound like much, but every percentage point counts when you're on the road from $500 to $5,000. So, we're not just investors. We're students of the market. We're learning every day, staying curious, and using that knowledge to make smarter plays. It's not the most glamorous part of investing, but it's the groundwork that sets up those big wins. Now, let's shift gears and talk about the silent hero in the world of investing, compound interest. It's the secret sauce, the slow and steady friend that can turn your $500 into a mountain over time. But we're on a one-year clock, so how does compounding fit into your fast-track plan? Here's the deal. Compound interest is like planting a tree. The best time to plant it was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Even in our tight time frame, the seeds of compounding can sprout if we're smart about reinvesting any gains we make. Let's break it down with some quick math. Say you make 10% gain on a stock. Instead of pocketing that $50, you reinvest it into another opportunity. Now you're working with $550, and another 10% gain isn't just another $50, it's $55. It's growth on top of growth, the essence of compounding. Buffett himself calls compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. He's used it to build his wealth over decades. But we're applying the principle in micro. We're compounding aggressively, reinvesting gains frequently, and keeping the cycle going. Remember, while we're aiming for the stars with our $5,000 goal, the true power of compounding is realized over a longer horizon. It's the patient investor's best play. But even in the short term, it can give us a leg up. So, as we make our moves and score our wins, let's not forget to plant those seeds back in the fertile ground of the market. Let's harness the power of compound interest, even in our one-year sprint. It's time to grow our financial tree, even if it's one branch at a time. Let's take a quick reality check. Going from $500 to $5,000 in a year is like hitting a home run in the ninth inning. It can happen, but not every time. Markets are unpredictable, and while we aim high, we also stay grounded. We're here to make informed bets, not miracles. So, we set realistic milestones, celebrate the small victories, and stay on course. It's about the journey as much as the destination. Keep those expectations real, and let every step forward count. Sometimes, the best investments aren't found on Wall Street, but on Main Street. Think of side hustles, freelance gigs, or turning a hobby into cash. These are the real-world plays that can steadily build your bankroll. They're the grind that can pay off with less risk than high-flying stocks or volatile cryptos. So while we navigate the markets, let's not overlook the power of good old-fashioned hard work. It might just be the most reliable asset in our portfolio. Remember, whether it's $500 or $5,000, the principles of smart investing don't change. It's about setting goals, taking calculated risks, and staying informed. We've armed ourselves with a game plan, but the real work starts now. So, roll up those sleeves and let's get to it. If you've enjoyed this playbook for financial growth, give us a like, drop a comment with your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe for more investment insights. Until next time, keep investing, keep learning, and keep growing. See you at the top.